Hello everyone, welcome back. So, we are in uh, the second lecture of this module, MDOF system. And in the previous lecture, we discussed time domain solution. In this lecture, we will see how to solve in frequency domain. Right. So, again, uh, so frequency domain solution. So, the equation of motion. equation of motion is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to f of t. So, what we can do? We can take the Fourier transform of both sides and if you recall, uh, we have x of t that we can convert into x of omega and we can also bring back x of t from capital X of omega. So, what is x of omega? It is 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e to the power minus i omega t d t and how to bring back x of t from the Fourier transform version. So, it is again 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity then x of omega e to the power i omega t d omega. So, that is the Fourier transform pair. So, if we take the Fourier transform of both sides, then obviously, uh, we can represent these time functions in terms of its Fourier series. So, let us do that. So, first term will be m, then 1 by square root of 2 pi x double dot of t. So, the Fourier transform will be minus infinity to plus infinity minus omega square x of omega exponential i omega t. Then, d omega. So, that is the representation of x double dot of t plus c then we will have 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity. Then we have i omega x of omega exponential i omega t d omega plus k times sorry there will be 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity. Then we have x of omega exponential i omega t d omega. Then on the right hand side, we will have 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity, then a for of omega exponential of i omega t d omega. So, that is the Fourier transform of both sides 
And then uh, now uh, what we can do? We can simplify this equation. So, effectively this uh, right hand side will take it on the left hand side and then we will simplify. So, this part we will take it the left hand side and then if you simplify what we get is 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity. Then within bracket we will have k minus omega square m plus i omega c times x of omega minus f of omega bracket close, then we will have exponential i omega t d omega. So, this is equal to 0. Now, obviously, it implies that this third sorry second bracketed term is equal to 0, which if we fill up it is k minus omega square m plus i omega c times x of omega minus f of omega. Okay. And then uh, it immediately follows a very simple expression. So, x of omega will be equal to k minus omega square m plus i omega c whole inverse times f omega. Now, this quantity we call it h of omega. So, x of omega is nothing but h of omega times f of omega. So, x of omega equal to h of omega times f of omega. So, that is the relation we get for m of system in frequency domain. So, this is the solution, solution in frequency domain. And as obvious, this uh, solution in frequency domain is relatively simpler, uh, because uh, we just need to evaluate the Fourier transform of the input, that is the force we apply f of t. Then once we do that for a particular system, if it is m of we have this h of omega ready, that we will do in a minute. For that only task is to go for this matrix inversion. Now, we can bypass that also through modal decomposition, that we will do in a minute, but for the time being, the point to be noted here is that if we have f of t, then we can easily find out f of omega, capital F of omega using Fourier transform. And then uh, that if we multiply with h of omega, h of omega is called frequency response function. Then uh, we already studied for SDOP system, what is the nature of this uh, particular function. So, that is again uh, a known relation we get from the Fourier representation of the dynamic equilibrium equation, which is the starting point here. And uh, we discussed in detail what is the advantage and that is also visible, because of this uh, simple product form, it is very easy to evaluate and uh, numerically also doing FFT is very simple. So, the moment we define our forcing function f of t, we can easily find out the response. But again, remember uh, in this uh, derivation, we did not use the effect of initial condition. Now, 
this h of omega so basically a matrix so this is the frequency response function so that is the complete solution in uh, frequency domain. The only issue is that we need to go for this matrix inversion. So, this matrix inversion uh, we need to go. So, h of omega is what? This is k minus omega square m plus i omega c. So, inverse of that. Now, you can easily sense if it is a large structure, this k, m and c, all of them are very large. So, uh, we need to first combine them in this format and then after that, you can easily sense there is a i of omega here. That means, uh, it is a complex quantity and then we have to take the inversion. So, otherwise uh, this is uh, very simple. So, the moment we define a structure that means, we start with its geometry, material property, boundary condition, automatically we define mass, stiffness and damping matrix. That is the starting point of uh, any design or any analysis. So, we first identify the structure and the moment we identify the structure for that these matrices are already identified and the moment we quantify this mass stiffness and damping matrix then obviously we can uh, find out this inversion so the only task is for every omega for every omega this matrix inversion is necessary needs to be done and here uh, don't get confused with omega n this is the frequency and omega n is the natural frequency right so that's the difference otherwise for every omega we can find out h of omega and the moment we know h of omega multiply that with f of omega and we will get x of omega and the moment we evaluate x of omega then again we can actually convert it into time domain just by inverse Fourier transform. So, up to this point it is fine because uh, we can easily uh, evaluate the solution uh, in frequency domain. But the problem is uh, as I said for large uh, matrices we need to go for matrix inversion. Now, uh, let us see if we uh, go for modal decomposition then uh, what is the solution. So, now so let us investigate um, solution in frequency domain after modal decomposition. So, let us quickly investigate this and then uh, we will quickly develop a very small MATLAB code to plot the frequency response function and see how does it look like for a MDOF system. Now, we start with the again equation of motion and the 
transformation x is equal to phi z right. Okay. So, obviously x of t will be equal to what? Will be equal to some amplitude x a exponential of i omega t and what is this amplitude? x a is nothing but if I use the um, previous expression it is phi of z a uh, exponential i omega t right. So, that is the representation using amplitude in modal domain right. Not only that if you recall phi transpose m phi which is equal to identity matrix because normally we prefer for most normalized version of this uh, phi matrix. So, phi transpose k phi is equal to omega n just. So, these are the ortho gonality with respect to m and k. And if we cast C matrix as a scaled version of mass and uh, stiffness matrix. So, if C is equal to alpha m plus beta k, then obviously, phi transpose C phi is equal to twice beta n omega n. So, that is the matrix, right. Okay. So, now what we have? If you recall the previous equation we developed k minus omega square m plus i omega c times x of omega is equal to f of omega. Now, In place of this x of omega, what we can do? We can write phi z of omega. So, within bracket we have k minus omega square m plus i omega c. So, that is the equation in terms of modal coordinate z. Now, both side of this equation if I multiply by phi transpose, then what we can do? We can adopt the orthogonality relation right and uh, let us do that. So, what we will have within bracket? So, this will be omega n square minus omega square i identity matrix plus i omega in place of c. So, that let us call it uh, in a different name. So, that is the matrix and then we have z of omega then phi transpose a for omega. So, that is the equation after we apply the orthogonality. Now, what is the advantage of applying this orthogonality relation? If you recall, it decouples this originally coupled equation in the modal coordinates. Right? In the modal coordinate, uh, they are uh, basically single degree of freedom system and uh, one is independent of another. So, that is the reason uh, we can treat every modal 
uh, domain equation separately and find out the solution. And that precisely will help us to avoid matrix inversion if we consider the coupled equation in the combined form uh, where from we started. So, this equation if we further uh, simplify what we get is um, Z n of omega will be what you can easily find it out because these matrices they are all diagonal and uh, we know what will be the expression. Uh, let me write it down and then I uh, will explain. So, phi n k transpose times f k k ranging from 1 to n divided by omega n square minus omega square plus i twice omega eta n omega n. How do you get this? Again, uh, we put the expression of these three matrices. They are now diagonal matrices and then uh, for nth modal solution, we get this expression. Okay. So, what you can see is that in this expression, this denominator, we can easily find out the moment we define mass, stiffness and damping, then immediately we can quantify what is the omega n and eta n. And the moment we do that, we can actually find out this denominator and then we also know the phi matrix from the eigen analysis of mass and stiffness. And then uh, using that, we can find out what is the modal response in frequency domain. And this mathematical expression clearly shows us that we do not need a matrix inversion, which is otherwise a difficult task as we derived in the previous case. So, if we again revisit the previous case, you can see here, we need to go for this matrix inversion and then multiply with f of omega to find out the solution x of omega. It has one advantage because directly you get the response in the generalized coordinate. However, for that, we need to pay a computational cost that we can bypass here if we follow this format and here we can easily find out the frequency domain response of uh, this modal coordinates z n and once we find out uh, all z n. So, we can easily uh, evaluate x of omega which is phi times z of omega. So, that is the complete uh, set of equations we can use for the solution. So, both of them we have now uh, in the first phase uh, we, we derived the solution in frequency domain using the complete set of equation which are combined and then uh, we need to go for matrix inversion, but in this format if we use modal decomposition and uh, using modal superposition technique, we can find out the response in frequency domain without a matrix inversion. This is very handy and actually for large structure where we have large number of modes, normally uh, complex structures often have uh, degrees of freedom more than thousands or in terms of millions, then uh, obviously that many natural frequencies we get. But what we can do, we can truncate this expression uh, 
these two equation after certain modes there are certain rules how to truncate we should consider uh, more than 90 to 95 percent modal mass and uh, the number of modes that gives us the modal mass uh, more than 90 percent or 95 percent it is up to the designer. Then uh, at that point uh, we can truncate and then consider that many modes and find out the solution and we can avoid the matrix inversion. So, that is the advantage and in fact, uh, in commercially available softwares normally this is what is done to find out the response in frequency domain. So, we select the number of modes we consider based on again the mass participation factor uh, or the modal mass that we can easily find out. Then uh, based on that we can uh, truncate the number of modes and use this relation to find out the solution in the generalized coordinate. So, this derivation is uh, pretty straightforward and we can easily adapt to find out the solution. So, our next task is to consider a discrete system, we will again consider the same thread of system and then for that let us plot the h of omega. So, plot h of omega for uh, 3 dof system and then once we have this uh, h of omega, we can easily find out the solution in frequency domain. So, next task let us consider an example. Okay, so, this is the code we developed in the previous class for time domain response. So, what I do is uh, consider the first part because it is the same. So, up to this point let us copy. So, let us give some name. So, what we have? We have a thread up system that we considered in the previous lecture and then we also consider 2 percent modal damping ratio in the first two modes right. And then we have identified mass stiffness and damping matrices. Now, let us first define omega and recall the natural frequency in this case uh, we had up to 5.5. So, let us cover the complete range we go from 0 to 20 radian per second and then uh, let me ch check how many omega point we have and then uh, we have to initialize frequency response function matrix. So, this is uh, let me first find out the degrees of freedom in this case we have 3 comma 3 and then uh, we have an omega. Okay. Now, or otherwise let me make it simple. So, what we do? We define h 1 omega. So, our case it is a 3 dop system. So, h omega 
will be also 3 cross 3 and uh, we will have 3 diagonals. So, let us call it h omega 1, h omega 2 and h omega 3, these are the 3 diagonals. We will also evaluate of diagonal terms and uh, each of them let us initialize We can actually initialize in a single go, but uh, I want to show you uh, all the individual components. So, of diagonal terms will be h uh, omega say 1 2, then h omega 1 3 and h omega 2 3. Okay. So, now we run a for loop so what we have to do we have to go for this matrix inversion so that's the third bracketed matrix we have to invert it so let us define say h omega is equal to i n v inverse of k minus omega square times m plus i omega then Okay. So, for every omega, we will invert this matrix and save it in h omega. Obviously, h omega 1 will be equal to h omega 1 comma 1 and then we find out h omega 2 and then h omega 3. So, they will be the other two elements in the leading diagonal. then we will have h omega 1 2 so similarly we define 1 3. So, this will be 1 3 and then finally 2 3. So, this will be 2 3.
Okay. Then finally, plot them. So, Also, let us define the y level. So, that is the first element. Okay. So, let us run this and see how the first um, uh, there is some mistake. So, there will be underscore here. So, then let us plot it. So, what we get you can see is the h omega 1 comma 1. Similarly, and this is obviously the absolute value, we can also plot the phase. So, uh, in a single plot, we can do that. So, we also plot the phase. So, here we plot the phase. So, this is so in a single plot let us have the two So, this will be not phase, but angle. Yeah. So, what you can see now is the amplitude and phase of uh, the frequency response function, uh, we have plotted the first element. So, we can change that. So, instead of first, let us now try second one and see how they look like and you can easily see the second one. Similarly, we can plot the third one also. So, these are the diagonal elements. 
Okay. And then uh, you can also plot the off diagonal elements. So, let us plot them. So, 1, 2 first. and you can see the off diagonal element 1 2 then uh, 1 3 and then finally 2 3 okay so The point to be noted here is that uh, we now have the frequency response function and you can see the uh, effect of three frequencies we have. Uh, one is uh, around I think 0 0.8 if I correctly recall. So, first one is 0 0.8, second one is somewhere 3.8 or something and then uh, the last one is 5.8 or something. So, at that locations we have these peaks and we also have the phase. So, now we can combine them and find out the h of omega and in fact, uh, this line number 48 to 53, I split them just to show you one by one how to get it. We can do it in a single go and store it in a uh, single matrix uh, that I uh, leave uh, to you. It is a simple exercise. You can uh, define h of omega here directly as zeros. We have 3 comma 3 comma n omega. So, n omega is the number of frequency values. So, there in a single go you can actually store uh, all the components. So, as many degrees of freedom you have. So, uh, that is how you can define or initialize h omega matrix in a single go you can uh, save it. But, uh, this is just to show you uh, step by step uh, how we can evaluate the frequency response function. Now, obviously, the remaining task is uh, to find out the response uh, in frequency domain. So, uh, that we will do in the next class actually uh, in the next uh, module uh, we will go for MDOF system response due to support motion. So, we will consider earthquake and then apply earthquake and for that we will find out the response uh, at different flows. So, we will again reconsider this thread of system and then uh, we will apply the earthquake at the base. Uh, for that again we let us derive the equation of motion first and then we will solve it in time domain and then I will again come back to this point where uh, we will solve the response in frequency domain. So, we will use this h of omega and multiply that with f of omega to find out the response in frequency domain. That we will do uh, in the next module. So, with that let us close here. Uh, now, uh, we have the solution of MDOF system in both time and frequency domain. So, uh, I will suggest all of you practice at your end, find out the response, uh, see how they look like and develop uh, the MATLAB code, go through them, uh, try it for different uh, structures. So, you can increase the degrees of freedom and then uh, also find out the response see how, how they uh, behave. One uh, exercise I can leave here in this case uh, we have considered eta in the first two modes which is 2 percent in this case. So, you can consider uh, say second and third mode instead of first and second mode and find out basically the damping of the structure. So, these uh, kind of uh, examples you can solve at your end and, and uh, feel confident to find the response of the MDOF system in time and frequency domain. And if you have any doubt, do let us know in the next uh, live session and then we will clear your doubt. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.